we'll get going on this. So Kaylin has been awesome. She is a career coach in our career studio. She has been in charge of this employer in the studio program. She's going to lead this session and take you through a bunch of questions and I'll just kind of chime in and I'm always curious about things. I really enjoyed these employer in the studio um, half hour sessions just because I learned so much about every organization and, and about opportunities. So thank you for participating. Uh, so much you. chat and I'll let Kaylin go ahead and lead this. Yeah. Great. All right, so to start us off, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your career? Yeah, so um, Chad Traster, I'm um, Regional Development Leader for Thrivent uh, here in Omaha. Um, I um, am a 1996 Midland uh, grad and uh, went uh, through management and marketing as my uh, two concentrations uh, when I was there. Um, I've uh, been in this industry, financial services industry, for uh, my entire career. Um, I've been with multiple companies, however, um, a lot of different types of, of, of roles within uh, companies. So uh, a lot of um, experience inside and outside helping clients all the way to being inside of a home office uh, environment and, and then back into the uh, where I'm at today with, with Thrivent. And, I've been with Thrivent for um, about two and a half years now, and um, the the main um, role for me is really to recruit and help um, develop new financial advisors, and I'm kind of the main support person for their first four years of being in this business. Super cool. What can I ask you? What drew you to Thrivent? Why Thrivent? Yeah, so for me, um, a, a few things. Um, one is that I've always admired Thrivent as a company, uh, being a, um, a company that started off with uh, Lutheran roots uh, clear a hundred and some years ago. Um, but uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the mission and, and, and the values and the ethics and morals of, of the company um, really drew me uh, to it initially because I really felt like um, some financial companies, um, we get a bad name because of the uh, bad deeds of a few. Um, and so um, joining Thrivent, I felt like uh, as a company, um, it did never had to worry about uh, the ethics and morals uh, part of things since uh, we are a Christian based company. Um, and then really it was the opportunity. Um, it was the, the, the right fit for me. It was the right timing in my life. And, and that's oftentimes when we talk to, to new people about the career is sometimes the timing is just not right. Um, and that's okay. So let's, uh, revisit later, uh, when the timing could become right. And, and so it was, it was a timing thing for me as well to, uh, leap out of a, a corporate world uh, type of position back into helping new advisors and, and the ultimate uh, clients that we have. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Sure. <clears throat> so what's your favorite part of your job with Thrivent? I think it, it, it really, since the beginning of, of when I started in the career, it's that end uh, helping a, uh, one of our clients um, achieve some sort of financial clarity in their life. Um, so it's the, it's the idea that um, we can put a plan in place that, that they can follow, uh, that they can uh, feel comfortable with. Um, and ultimately, it's um, kind of the, the joy of um, attending retirement parties and attending college graduation parties of, of those clients that we helped uh, in those ways. And it's also the satisfaction uh, also on the other end of things when we have to deliver a a life insurance uh, death claim uh, to a grieving family. Um, although it's a sad time in their life, um, it's one less thing that they have to worry about is finances. And, and so uh, it's that end client in mind always uh, for me is, is how many people can we help uh, find, find that financial clarity. Mm -hmm. Nice, very, very circular mission, you know, just woven throughout. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, um, can you tell us a little bit about like what what makes a good fit for Thrivent as far as like either a recent college grad or someone looking for maybe a career change? Yeah, I think you know when I talk to to people looking at this career, a lot of the things that we talk about, um, we can train on a lot of things. Um, so we can we can help people get licensed. We can train on products. We can train on processes. All kinds of things that we can train on. 
but there are <clears throat> there are a few things that um, we can help people understand, but they have to actually um, just have it within them. And part of that is uh, number one being uh, entrepreneurial and results driven. Um, there are many people that uh, the word uh, you know entrepreneur uh, scares uh, them, and that's okay because uh, my wife is one of them. Uh, she would never be a great entrepreneur. Um, uh, but the, the results driven uh, piece of things too is, is oftentimes, no matter if you're involved in athletics or you're involved in academics or whatever it might be, there are always results we're driving for. Uh, and so we're looking for people that want to uh, strive for uh, hitting those goals that they've set for themselves and, and maybe even go beyond. Um, another one um, is being a natural coach uh, or guide, because that is ultimately what we do every day, is we, uh, we coach and guide people to find uh, the, those, uh, the financial clarity that they need. And it can be as simple as helping people budget their money, uh, or as very complex as uh, business and estate planning. So um, the last one is really the desire to help people um, on a real grand scale. Uh, because when you talk about um, financial advising, uh, that's one of the biggest things in people's lives are finances. Uh, we think that uh, a person's health, a person's education, a person's faith, and then ultimately uh, finances all are extremely big things in, in people's lives. Um, and so we look for those three things because I can't teach somebody to be an entrepreneur, but I can teach them about being an entrepreneur. I can't teach somebody to want to help people, but I can teach them about helping people. So a lot of those things are the uh, kind of the, the intangible things that we uh, look for. Mm -hmm. cool. So within that, what are some common career paths for say a recent graduate that's looking to get into financial advising within Thrivent? Like what would that career path look like? Yeah, I mean, really, the, the, the start to the career path is the same for, for all people, especially college grads. It is starting off as a financial advisor, uh, getting the, the necessary training, uh, licensing that they need. Um, but when, when we look at that uh, path, sometimes it leads into teaming. Um, and so we look at not only a person being a financial advisor of one, but maybe a, uh, a group of people uh, working together to, to de develop these financial plans. Um, but there also are going to be leadership opportunities as well. So we, we are looking for those leaders of the future. Um, although I did come from outside of Thrivent to be a leader, um, most of the time we like to grow from within. Uh, so we want to find those people that can develop as an advisor, uh, turn into a mentor, and then ultimately maybe have a position such as my, mine that they can uh, grow a team of advisors and help them get started the way they were started as well. I think so many times there are students who are interested in that kind of a career, but I think they're scared just because a lot of times they, they envision this process where they have to come and develop their own list and cold call. And I mean, how, how do you help you know, a young student starting off their career or a young a graduate, I should say, you know, how do you help them to really get established, feel confident, give them the tools or resources to start to build their clientele? How does that work, you know, at maybe as like a trainee kind of a program or how does it work at Thrivent? Yeah, absolutely, Connie. And that's, that's, that's exactly right. It is a scary um, endeavor for uh, everybody. I, I don't, it, and if it doesn't scare you a little, then I, there's something a little wrong uh, with you uh, because it is, it's, it's something that when we're asking somebody to develop a business from the ground floor up, a lot of people don't know how to do that. And that's where the training and the support really come into play. And for us um, in, inside of Thrivent, the, the opportunity for um, uh, just having that support is greater than, than most companies that, that I've seen. And that we have somebody uh, that does help you develop that marketing and prospecting plan from the beginning. And from the beginning, and what I mean by that is in our recruiting and selection process, we're developing marketing and prospecting plan. We're not waiting until the end and saying, yes, I want to be an advisor. Now, how do I do it? 
we're getting people involved with that process right away. Um, and when I talk to people, um, it's uh, a lot of uh, people are, uh, have a little uh, trepidation about, uh, you know, who do I start with? And like other companies, we're going to ask them, who do they know right away? So who comes to mind? However, we're also um, very aware that no matter how many people you know, it's not enough. Um, you, I, I have family members of mine in 25 years of being in this business, uh, they're still not my clients. So we know that there's gonna be a lot of no's along the way. So we have to train people to really uh, figure out how to be introduced to more people, whether that is through the people they already know uh, or it's through really joining um, organizations and, and doing things that you really like and you're really passionate about um, and using those as marketing opportunities. Um, we do caution against getting involved with things, thinking, prospecting, and marketing first um, because people can see right through that. Mm -hmm. um, if uh, they see uh, Chad walking into the um, Nebraska Dental Association meeting, that's not going to be a good fit. They're going to say, oh, here comes that insurance investment guy. I don't want to talk to him because I know why he's here. Um, but if I, um, on the other hand, came up with a, a group of uh, people that really uh, loved to hunt and fish, I could fit in well there because I like to do those things. And I'm going to do them anyway. So why not you turn it into a business opportunity as well? Um, we do a lot of workshops and, and seminars for um, educational purposes. Uh, we never sell when we're doing workshops. It is purely an educational thing. So it's a way for us to get a group of people together, deliver uh, the same message. Um, and then if they are interested, we uh, then uh, go into their individual conversations. There are people like myself, uh, like uh, some of our other leaders as well, that um, I'm not interested in building my own clientele anymore, uh, but I'm interested in helping others build theirs. Um, people knowing that I've been in this business a long time often want to know if I can help them. And my answer is always, of course, um, but I'm going to bring one of my team members with me to, to help along that path. And those are all the new people that we bring aboard. So a lot of different ways to develop clientele. We try to avoid that, uh, you, you mentioned the nasty cold calling. Um, we try to avoid that as much as possible. Um, little sidebar personal story, when I started in the business, I started with the friends and family list. Um, I went to my manager at that time and I said, okay, I've, I've gone through that list. I, I don't have anybody else to call. What do I do? Um, and if you think back as, as far as 25 years ago, uh, and it'll be hard for some people to think back that far because they're not even that old yet, um, but they used to have these things called phone books. Uh, and so my manager's uh, um, answer was to go grab the Omaha phone book, which was probably four or five inches thick. And he said, pick out a letter in the alphabet and go to that letter and start dialing numbers. Um, that lasted for all of probably 15 phone calls and I was done. Um, I said, what else? Um, and so it was um, through, for myself, it was through a lot of other um, self-training and, and figuring things out, but figuring out that getting introduced to people on a favorable basis was the best way to do it. And, and I got really good at that. So we have to train people to do that. So we don't have to uh, do the cold calls. Mm -hmm. Do you offer internships? We do. Um, we just for, uh, formalized our internship program here this fall for next summer. Um, and uh, right now um, we have closed off applications to that uh, because we've had enough uh, um, uh, interest in it. And we only have one spot open for, for next summer. Uh, I'm trying to get that to more than one, but we only have the one, uh, one uh, open. And so um, the internship is, a, is, I think, will be a really valuable thing going forward. And as we get it uh, up, and, up and running, I think we'll have more opportunities, not only during the summer, but fall and spring type of thing. Um, and it's, 
it's really going to be a meaningful internship. It's not going to be, um, please go make copies for me, go do some filing, get me a cup of coffee, um, not learning. Uh, because ultimately what we want to do is find those people that think that financial advising might be a career option for them. And we're going to have them shadow a number of uh, advisors. Um, and if it works well for the uh, intern, uh, they do a good job for us and they really like uh, what we have to offer, then it can just be a, a natural path into a, a job opportunity after graduation. So they're going to be offered to juniors, seniors uh, in status. Um, and um, it is a paid internship and we work around schedules uh, because most uh, college students do um, take classes uh, during the every you know, waking month that they have. So uh, we'll work around a lot of those things as well. Good. I'm so glad to hear that you really developed an internship program mm -hmm. because I think there's been interest over the years in that. And that's really good. So as part of that, the internship program or as part of coming on as a new alumni, tell me about like the certification or the licensure. So part of your industry is all about getting, you know, licensed and certified to, um, to sell these things, having the knowledge behind it. What's that process like? Is that part of your training process? Do you pay for those the exams? I mean, how does that all work at Thrivent? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It, it, we're a little unique in this way. Um, I'll start with, you know, the licensing is four different exams that we have people take. Mm -hmm. um, it's the insurance exam for uh, the state of Nebraska. It's the uh, exam called an SIE or Securities Industry Essentials, which is a pretest really to the, the rest of the uh, investment licenses. And then it's the Series 7 and the Series 66, uh, which are uh, kind of the final exams uh, of the, the investment side. And so the, uh, the, the thing about the life and health exam and the SIE exam is that Anybody that wants to take those exams can take them at any time and not really have to have sponsorship from a company or be involved with a company to do that. Um, so we do see some uh, college students and in fact, um, a couple of the uh, intern candidates that I have for this coming summer um, have committed to already taking some of those exams during their junior year of, of college and coming out with those licenses. Um, so what we do is uh, for the life and health insurance exam is we uh, recommend the study material that we think is really the, the good study material to help people pass the first uh, try. Uh, and then when it comes to the, the security side of things, uh, we uh, have a coach that's assigned to them. And um, our coach, Laura, uh, her full-time job is to help people pass those exams on the first try. Um, and we have an extremely high pass rate for the first try on, on all of those exams. Um, we either pay for or reimburse all costs of the exams and the study materials. So ultimately, there is no out-of-pocket cost for anybody uh, to take those exams. We also uh, have the opportunity, which is a little bit um, interesting, I, at least I think, is that uh, we, will, we can pay somebody to study for these tests um, and, and take those tests. So we have a six week program to where we can pay them for 40 hours a week and their full time job really is to study. Um, we have another alternate path that sometimes people will join us that uh, need a little bit more time uh, or maybe they're transitioning careers. Uh, so we have a nine week program that we don't pay for but we do offer a bonus opportunity once everything is passed. So um, ultimately you don't pay anything for the licensing and, and you do get uh, paid uh, for going through the licensing phase. And someone to walk that journey with you and help to train you and help you to study, right? Yes, absolutely. Yep. I feel like you've eliminated a lot of fear that I would have, you know, as, as far yeah. as like that. What about you, Kaylin? Yeah, um, and then within that, is there anything you can recommend kind of either like study wise or things to look into for students that might be interested in going down that path but like want to kind of test the waters first like is there like a certain subject you would recommend kind of like diving deeper into yeah you know anything to do with with personal finance uh anything to do with um 
uh, investments, insurance, uh, those those sort of things. But I, I think what's missed a lot in, in our industry is a lot of that knowledge can be taught by us. Um, but if you were to take um, classes such as speech, uh, classes that concentrate on behavioral um, things, uh, psychology type of things, um, ultimately this business is a relationship business. Um, nobody cares what I know unless they know that I care. And so if I can build a relationship with somebody, everything else really will take care of itself on whatever products or anything that, that has to follow it. So we really, um, I would say, you know, being able to, to, to talk comfortably in front of people is a big thing. Um, I was never one of those people in high school. I was kind of keep to myself um, and uh, the speech teacher, uh, Mary, uh, she always wanted me to be in speech. And I said, there's no way I'm talking in front of people, that that's just not going to happen. Um, but I'll tell you when I came to Midland, I took speech. Um, I think at that point in time, it was a required class. So I guess I probably reluctantly took speech, <laughs> um, but I, I took that class and, and I, I joined a fraternity on campus and I really started to kind of come out of my shell a little bit. And um, today I've talked to, to groups as small as one-on-one -on -one up to thousands of people um, and am pretty comfortable doing it, but it wasn't without some of that background of, of having some of the education and just kind of getting uncomfortable mm -hmm. so you, that you can get comfortable. Mm -hmm. Right, stretching yourself out of that, of those boundaries a little bit. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So we are getting kind of close to time here. Is there anything that we haven't covered or brought up yet that you really want us or our students to know? Yeah, I, I think that uh, one thing about, I'll, I'll talk about this industry as a whole, is it, this industry as a whole is, it's scary. Um, and it has a, a not so good reputation of retention. So I think that's a good topic to, to talk about um, because the, the industry retention over a four year period of time on average is 12%. So a hundred people recruited today, we have 12 of them left in four years. That doesn't give anybody any confidence whatsoever in, in this business. 88% um, failure rate is not good. Um, and, and so what I want to kind of uh, leave you with a little bit here is that Thrivance is much better. We actually lead our peer group. We're at 42%. Um, still not fantastic. Uh, we're still working on it, uh, but we think between our selection process, our licensing process, our training, um, our four-year support system, that helps us in, in getting that, that higher retention. So uh, I think just knowing that it is a tough road, but with the right structure, with the right support, um, it's a much better chance at success. Really good to know. Yeah, and very impressive to that gap between Thrivent and kind of the rest of the pack. Yeah, yeah. You know, I do. Th I, I think. I think too. It's so important to think about. You know. Um, just kind of what are your passions and, and like your personality, you know, what are your natural strengths and how does that tie in and what are your beliefs and your values? And I, I think that's going to help, you know, because you're such a, a value driven orient organization, you know, mission driven. I think that, um, you know, finding that right match probably helps with retention as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I don't think I have any more questions. Kaylin, from, from a uh, student perspective, do you have any more questions for Chad before we let him go today? Um, I mean, maybe just the super general <laughs> question I hate asking, but I mean, um, do you have any words of advice for anybody considering going down this path or just college kids in general, I guess? Yeah, I mean, for both, I, I think get, um, get some experience in interviewing different companies. Um, I tell people that interview with us, don't just interview us go interview our competitors mm -hmm. because not everybody will find that we're the right fit, but I would much rather have them in the industry with another company than not. 
because the industry right now is aging. Uh, we have a lot of people that are getting towards that retirement of being financial advisors. So we we have to have an influx of newer advisors. Um, and um, if that means that they have to go to a competitor to get that done, great, because they're ultimately going to help people. But I think uh, we're confident enough with, with the way that we do business and what our uh, values are that we'll find the right uh, fit for our company. Um, and um, we'll find uh, the, the people that want to work with us and we want to work with them. Okay. Wise words. Yeah, very good advice. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's probably it for today's session. I think we're out of time, aren't we almost? Okay. So yep. Chad, thank you again so much. And, and you know, not just for this, but for always being involved with Midland and for being willing to meet with students. I've reached out with, you know, to you many times and you're always Yes. So welcoming just to have those conversations with students. So we just, we really, really appreciate uh, Thrive and support of our students and their learning opportunities. So thank you for all you do uh, for our students every day, not just today. Oh, absolutely. And thank you for the opportunities to, to do that, to give back. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Well, you have a great day. Thank you, Kaylin, as well. Yeah. Thank you, you guys. Too. All Take right. Bye-bye.